Well, thank you for coming today. I'm David Rinchy, East Bay Regional Parks District Wildlife Biologist, Certified Wildlife Biologist. And it's my privilege today to talk to you about the California Black Grail and its response to marsh enhancements at Point Pinole. Bringing people together has been a cornerstone of our wildlife program for over the last two and a half decades. More than 4,000 volunteers have helped on this project and almost 11,000 hours of volunteer help. I always want to acknowledge at the beginning of these talks and express the sincere gratitude for the institutions and funding sources that have made this work possible. Our success hinges on partnering with other folks like the Regional Parks Foundation to forge new and innovative connections to enhance resources. So once again, thanks for coming today. This talks about the California Black Grail. I'm going to talk about its natural history, its conservation status. I'm going to talk about its distribution. I'm going to talk a little bit about the beautiful San Francisco Bay, its international significance, touch on global warming, and of course, couch all this in the recovery plan for tidal marsh ecosystems. Certainly, I'm going to mention the site, uh, the enhancement efforts by volunteers, the survey technique, uh, techniques, as well as some of the statistics. And lastly, I'll conclude with some next steps. So what is a California black rail? It's a slate colored rail about the size of a sparrow. It has little faint dots down its back. This animal is one of the most secretive and cryptic marsh birds. It spends almost its entire life in rodent made runways and corridors in dense marsh vegetation. Historically, our friend, the California black rail, was a year-round inhabitant, a suitable marsh and habitat along the San Francisco Bay shoreline, as well as the delta regions of the Sacramento and San Joaquin River. During the breeding season, this cautious, almost never seen rail uh, is difficult to locate unless you're out early in the morning at dawn or dusk and you listen for its sound, the kick-a-doo-doo-doo. Kicky doo doo doo. Look at the person next to you and say kicky doo doo doo. The black rail has a very extreme narrow niche and it's a great indicator of tidal marsh health and restoration success. Let's talk a little bit about the conservation status. In 1971, due to the loss of habitat, destruction, uh, freshwater marshes and brackish waters uh, disappearing, it was listed as a threatened species. It's also a California fully protected species. Threats to this beautiful bird include habitat loss, degradation, uh, encroachment of human activities, genetic isolation, and predation from native and non-native predators. Based on the work of Evans, much of the breeding population is found in the San Pablo Bay. It's estimated that roughly a little over 3,000 birds still remain in the North Bay. And a small population is also known to inhabit the Sierra Nevada. Currently, about 90% of the breeding population is located in the northern part of the San Francisco Bay. Now I want to talk a little bit about the San Francisco Bay Estuary. The San Francisco Bay Estuary supports one of the largest amounts of salt marsh in western North America and in 1850 almost 2200 kilometers of salt marsh were present. However, after the mid-1850s more than 90 percent of the salt marshes were lost. This remaining habitat is important staging areas for wintering migratory waterfowl like the northern pintail and the canvasback that make their way down the Pacific Flyway. The area is also known as an important Western Hemisphere shoreward reserve of uh, international significance. And as we know, tidal marshes are important ecosystems. Global warming scenarios are a significant threat to these environments. 
talk briefly about the United States Fish and Wildlife Recovery Plan for tidal marsh ecosystems. 11 wildlife species of concern were listed in this. This research, which I'm going to share with you today, is going to help fill in some of those knowledge gaps about the California black rail and certainly supports the Fish and Wildlife's goal of managing, restoring, and monitoring tidal marsh habitat. Our study area is a beautiful Point Pinol regional shoreline with stunning views of the San Francisco Bay. It includes almost 1,700 acres of tidal salt marsh. Vegetation here is characteristic of your typical uh, tidal marsh, including cord grass, pickleweed, and gum plant. The park provides habitat for six special status wildlife. Not only the California black rail resides here, but the California Ridgeway rail, the San Pablo California vole, Sassoon shrew, and the endemic salt marsh song sparrow. Here's a picture of the salt marsh harvest mouse and the clapper rail. I'll talk briefly about the habitat efforts. This work hinges on the efforts of over 4,000 people, and they spent 11,000 hours helping us to remove non-native vegetation. Almost well, over 120 cubic meters, or 450 cubic yards of non-native plants were moved from this location. Also, since 2004 to the present, we have participated in partnerships with other public agencies like the Contra Costa County Fish and Wildlife Commission, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Partners for Wildlife, and the Contra Costa County Mosquito and Vector Control. The effort here was to remove greater than 300 tons of channel clogging debris, and this debris was removed to improve tidal exchange, the flow of water in and out of those channels, to reduce mosquito problems, and certainly to enhance habitat for the iconic California black rail. So a little bit about the survey methods. Here you see on the bottom a beautiful uh, clapper rail, a ridgeway rail, giving a courtship call. Since uh, 2013, I've done systematic surveys to the present uh, monitoring these marsh birds. Uh, the survey methods are very similar. They, they couch from the San Francisco Bay uh, marsh bird survey protocol all the way down to the Conway studies of marsh monitoring birds. All the surveys are quite similar in that. So the methods here were call counts. In call counts, we require 10 minutes of listening per station. A five minute passive period would be followed by a period of broadcasting selected marsh bird calls like the black rail, the clapper rail, the sore Virginia and American bittern, and then another 10 minute, another five minute period. Typically one to two of these protocol level surveys would be abandoned due to some weather conditions. It could be noise, it could be a train, it could be a jet coming over that made rail detections impractical. The actual number of rails detected was recorded. Now I want to talk a little bit about our results, talk a little bit about the history of this location. During systematic breeding surveys for black rails throughout Central California, Malolas in 1978 reported detecting only one black rail at Point Pinole, regional shoreline. So we might say, prior to the restoration effort that I'm talking about today, Rails were absent from this site except as temporary refuge during extreme flooding or during migration or movement. In 2007, I detected the first black rail in the giant marsh, and then 2011, another black rail was detected. So this field research and the analysis that I'm presenting to you today is based on uh, call count data, which is now four times higher on average following the enhancement efforts. So here you can see a graph of the results. You have the number of black rails uh, on your vertical axis, and you have the number of years on your horizontal axis. And you can see that the rail numbers have been increasing over time to the point that 
black rails now on average are four times higher following the restoration effort and our R value is approaching 0.7 which is not bad for a long-term data set such as this. So all black rail detections were mapped uh, distance from the observer uh, and plotted along the along the survey area and as you can see from the color coding it was coded by year. So all black rails were confined to the higher upper marsh areas as you can see here and I put just a highlight on the screen of this. This is the upper limits of tidal flooding, uh, excuse me, tidal flooding. This is a location that is dominated by pickleweed and marsh grandelia. And we know from the literature that adult black rails survival is higher in these areas because they're able to avoid avian predation during these high tide events. Now, as I said earlier, the marsh transition is pretty characteristic of Central California in that cord grass is found out on the mud flats in the lower levels. And then the middle level elevations, we have pickleweed. And at the upper regions, we have gum plant or also known as uh, marsh daisies. We know from uh, the work in 1978 that the black rail that was detected in his, much of his work was typically found in the higher marsh at the upper limits of tidal flooding, flooding. We also know from the literature that black rails typically occupy tidal marshes at higher elevations out of 1.5 to 2 meters above sea level. This provides them with the temporary refuge uh, to escape predators as well as drowning. So what are some of the threats to tidal marshes? What is the threat to the black rail? Well, globally, we know that human activities are a threat to salt marshes. More than 6 million people, or roughly 10% of the population, resides in these low-level marsh areas. It's estimated that roughly 45% of our own U.S. population is found in coastal areas. We know that land alterations, filling, diking, draining, agricultural uh, land being converted to agriculture or urban development have significantly reduced uh, salt marsh distribution internationally. Then we look at, so what are some of the other threats to salt marshes? Well, we know sea level rise, the increasing frequency and intensity of storms associated with climate change are predicted in the, along the California coast and the San Francisco Bay well into the 21st century. So tell the person next to you, sea level rise is not really good for our friend the black rail. These low-lying tidal areas will be the first emergent habitat that will experience this type of inundation. So a reduction in habitat for this beautiful bird that says kiki do in the tidal marshes and the other uh, wildlife species associated with these tidal marshes is to be expected. Restoration of the tidal wetlands, especially along the upper edges of our current high tide locations, may curb the effects of the increasing inundation on marsh wildlife. This marsh enhancement effort to remove non-native plants and channel clogging debris at the giant marsh located at Point Pinole is demonstrating that with time, the desired species can respond positively to these habitat improvement efforts. We know from the literature that black rails respond fairly rapidly within three to 10 years of a restoration site. We also know from the literature that there is an effective dispersal ability among the black rail, which is supported by juvenile black rails dispersing widely from their breeding areas into apparent atypical habitat. We know that the black rail population now, based on call count data, is four times higher than the initial data of one obtained. It's hopeful that black rails uh, residing either in Sassoon Marsh or at the Giant Marsh will take up the newly restored Dobson Family Marsh at the southern end of Point Pinole. In summary, 
This trend of gradually increasing numbers of apparently breeding California black rails at the giant marsh following habitat improvement efforts supports the United States Fish and Wildlife Service recovery plan for tidal marsh ecosystems of the Northern and Central California. This work uh, is really a tribute to the collaborative efforts of countless resource-minded individuals that were willing to give their time. If you'd like to read more on this topic, I have a peer-reviewed paper in the Journal of Natural Resource Ecology and Management. So in closing, some of the next steps is going to be to continue monitoring black rail populations at this location and beyond. We certainly want to continue monitoring and managing tidal marshes. We certainly also want to look for new sources of funding to expand tidal marsh restoration efforts elsewhere. The California black rail has the ability to colonize newly restored and enhance tidal marshes once tidal influences are reestablished. But its capacity to do this will be challenged by sea level rise scenarios. So I really just stopped by today, I'm really quickly here, uh, talk a little bit about commu uh, communicating science to others. I've been doing it for more than three decades. The key thing is have fun involve people of all ages. We've been providing public with the tools, the inspiration necessary over the last three plus decades to mobilize an army of dedicated wildlife, wildlife volunteers to get the work that needs to be done. So with that, I'll take questions.